guys, I'm Ronald Hernandez with Web3 TV and I'm at ETH CC and joining me here we have Charles, the CEO of the DYDX Foundation. How are you today? Welcome to Paris. Doing very well, thank you. Thank you. I wanted to learn a little bit more about you and how you got into blockchain in the first place. I know you used to work in the government. So how did that transition? How did you make that transition? Absolutely. So I've been, I discovered the, the Bitcoin kind of phenomena back in 2011. I was doing a lot of peer-to-peer -peer file sharing and someone put the idea of, in my head of Bitcoin. I read the white paper and everything. So I started my journey fairly early. Uh, Did you buy Bitcoin at the time? Yeah, that's a story I don't like to share. <laughs> but yes, I bought some Bitcoin at the time and I sold everything at the time also. So I make my mistakes early. Uh, and then I kind of uh, came back again in the, in the ecosystem with the birth of smart contracts with Ethereum. Mm -hmm. uh, spent some time, as you said, at the Hong Kong government where I was head of fintech, um, growing the ecosystem of, of, uh, of fintech in general. And one of the verticals I was in charge was, uh, was blockchain. So I worked with a lot of blockchain projects uh, back in 2016, 17 to essentially support them in expanding in Asia and using Hong Kong as a, as a base. Um, later on, I joined uh, Consensus as head of Asia. So Consensus is a company behind Metamask. So many, uh, many of you must be familiar with Metamask. Yes, uh, I have. I use Metamask. <laughs> excellent. So Metamask is good for any of your crypto assets, NFTs and everything. Um, and later on, I joined DYDX. So DYDX is a, a major uh, decentralized exchange for derivatives. Uh, so we're number one in our space. And uh, we are very excited and extremely busy uh, building the version 4 of DYDX. So DYDX used to be sitting on Ethereum and Ethereum layer 2, and now we are moving to our own blockchain. So there is this narrative of uh, essentially applications which are getting sizable enough to build their own and dedicated infrastructure. So the DYDX chain is, uh, is upcoming later this year, and it's, uh, it's a full ecosystem which is kind of uh, blossoming uh, with uh, DAOs, decentralized governance, uh, participation of the token holders. We have NFTs as well with the edges. So we're very excited and, uh, and kind of all hands on deck uh, growing this ecosystem. Okay, that sounds exciting. So tell me a little bit more about the challenges when it comes to building decentralized applications and what you hope, what DYDX hopes to solve maybe by building its own blockchain and, and helping developers to more easily build apps and also to bring it to just more mainstream people outside of the native crypto world. I think the DYDX team has been from the, the very early stage of the project kind of reverse engineering many things. Mm -hmm. So really starting from the user, making sure we get the best user experience, the best, uh, I would say, experience with the platform overall, and trying to abstract all the technology uh, underneath. Uh, so blockchain is extremely complicated. It's also kind of an upcoming technology. It's not, it's progressing uh, really, really kind of in, in different phases and upgrading the, the, the platform and upgrading the, the application whenever there is technology which are ready to, to, be, uh, to, be, uh, to be essentially leveraged and upgrading the platform. Mm -hmm. One of the challenges when you build decentralized application is you, you kind of do a composable business. So you put your application on the top of someone else's blockchain right. and this blockchain might be progressing at the same pace as you are. Some blockchains are getting slower in upgrading. Oh. So you have this dependency, right? Okay. Does that depend on the amount of users, like if it gets congested? Yeah, and, yeah. The, and the progress of the, the engineers building the blockchain. So there's an application you can of rely on how much progress they are doing on Ethereum, for example, or on layer two. And if they are moving fast or as fast as you, that's great. If they are kind of working on multiple topics and and not not progressing as much as, uh, as you would you wish is kind of a uh, kind of stopper for you and you have to wait for them to upgrade so you can upgrade yourself right. so one reason we are moving to the DYD exchange and and building this uh, this new kind of infrastructure is we get to essentially manage the full stack okay. so it can really allow us to as a community to progress at our own pace and uh, we've been uh, uh, as, a, as a as a protocol in the in the dex uh, ecosystem since 2017 so we've been through a lot of Cycles. We are very laser focused. Another advantage when you move to your own chain is by essentially having control on the full stack, you can essentially fine tune this blockchain for your specific use case. Ethereum or some other chains are fantastic. I love Ethereum <laughs> personally, but they're multi-purpose. Uh, they, they they're ready for NFTs, they're ready for smart contracts, they're ready for all kinds of transactions. So it's a little bit like a Swiss knife. It's good for everything, but not good at, not best for specific oh, things. So by building our own chain, we can essentially 
having a chain which is really optimized for our use case, which is DeFi. Okay, I see. And what kind of world would you envision maybe within the next year? Like, what do you want to see happen within maybe the greater blockchain industry, but specifically DeFi and for DYDX? Like, what, what do you think needs to happen so that more people will be more easily able to use applications? Uh, maybe maybe two two folds here. One first thing is to be a little bit more uh, inclusive of different technologies and making sure that the user don't don't have to change wallets if they are changing chains or getting multiple bridges and everything like this. So what we are building at DYDX is you will be able to come with your Ethereum wallet and starting to use as a DYDX chain. So we will we will we will not ask anyone to change their habits so much. So making sure the user experience is really as smooth as possible okay. and kind of not being as tribal as sometimes the industry was thinking if you were born in Ethereum you have to stay on Ethereum forever. If there is a better technology for your application and for your your, your users, maybe the, the community should decide to just migrate. The same way when your phone uh, offers you an update and maybe Facebook or any service you use is migrating technology of, uh, of databases, mm -hmm. you should not care too much. It's a right. decision made by the engineers and it should not be something too emotional. Okay. Um, the, the, other, the other part is what I'm very excited about is the way that DeFi and, 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 and the, the DYDX ecosystem overall will get more opportunities for the, the community to get engaged in the product roadmap, in the new features uh, for DYDX, possibly new markets which will be traded on DYDX. So there is really this kind of very, very high velocity feedback and contributions for, the, for, for, for the, the users in general and token holders. How can they be part of it? Mm -hmm. And how can we simplify and getting the DAOs, voting systems much more efficient than it is today? Well, you mentioned the NFT hedgies, which are like little hedgehog avatars or users. So is that part of the overall strategy? Like how do you see these NFTs bringing more people into the space? I'm really excited about that. NFTs were born uh, in the Ethereum version of DYDX. They've been massively successful. It's kind of, a, of course, some kind of a, a way to, do, to distinguish yourself within the community, but there is all kind of quests and games organized. And the exciting thing is that these NFTs from, uh, from DYDX, the edges, are in the end of the community now to kind of redesign and upgrade uh, their, their functionalities, the programs around it for the new, the new version. So there is a DYDX forum where people are discussing about okay what do we want for the new chain how what how the hedges and the nfts will be part of it yeah. because people get some kind of emotional link with them now and uh, we are migrating to a new infrastructure edges will be following us and and the community is working on this and that there is some really good ideas so have a look and why do you think our digital identities have become so important to us maybe sometimes even more so than our physical identities we're so keen on, on customizing our avatars and, and making sure that our profiles are online or are, are, are you know are so important to us why do you think that is I think the trust in general in our societies is kind of expanding and we used to trust our governments we used to trust only maybe big corporations and one of the paradigm shifts offered by the crypto industry is to essentially offer you more options for things to trust. Right. Uh, so big decentralized network like, like blockchain networks are essentially trustable in my opinion. And I trust sometimes those kind of networks or those kind of communities much more than I trust maybe a company or maybe some, some Web2 applications. Okay. So I think there is this kind of shift and expansion of where you can anchor your trust and people are just leveraging, leveraging this. and. And, and the world is not easy world nowadays. If we look at this, there is a multiple crises and challenges happening around us. And there is this kind of digital societies which are better and better structured and which we trust more and more. And having a, a good identity over there makes you just feel much closer to this, uh, this kind of new, new trust base uh, where, where you can just evolve and, and grow. So is it, tr is it trustless? Is it a trustless society? That's a, that's no. A, that's, a, that's a really good, really good question. The the paradigm in our industry and within our communities, we are building trustless technology. Right. So we don't need to trust the technology anymore. It's designed in a way that is transparent and trustless. But the trust needs to be sitting somewhere, the right. trust needs to be anchored somewhere. Mm. So then I will trust people from my community or I will trust okay. the network overall. It's like a collective trust. But the trust cannot stay in the air. 
So right. even though we are building trustless technology, we are still in the trust kind of uh, of business, and we yeah. we want to have trustable communities, trustable product, and everything. So that's very interesting to see how this uh, kind of concept of trust is evolving within our digital uh, digital world. Definitely. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Charles. Thank you for having me.